You got it now. All right. All right. So, Assalamu alaikum, Ayubo one. Good evening to you all. I warmly welcome you to this very informative webinar on the topic digital marketing for SMEs. Do you want to be a game changer? On behalf of RPSL Consortium, I will be your moderator this evening. And may I begin by thanking you all for joining us on this beautiful Thursday evening. Let me take this opportunity to inform you that this is the first in a two-part series on this topic. Please look out for the flyers announcing part two, which we are tentatively scheduling for September 22nd. Many of you here might be wondering what or who RPSL is. Let me introduce you to the chairman of the Youth Empowerment Committee of RPSL Consortium, who incidentally has just stepped off a flight in Doha, Qatar. Uh, over to you, Dr. Ali Ahlam. I hope you can join us. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Tassi. Uh, welcome and good evening, everyone, for you this wonderful event, uh, Digital Marketing for SMEs. So in fact, uh, as a chairman for Youth Empowerment, it's my duty to introduce what RPSL, RPSL is all about. Regain Peace Sri Lanka, RPSL, is dedicated to promote knowledge and social well-being, and also to uplift skills to the community perspective. So our key objective is to assist and empower communities for better understanding, and also uh, living peacefully, and also building unity among. In the meantime, we are also committed to acknowledge and promote the, appreciate the diversity also within the communities for enhance the cohesive living. In the meantime, RPSL also dedicated especially to guide and educate and empower youth and also develop their potential contributes to the national growth. So these are the key contexts of our RPSL. So we are doing more than that. So with that perspective, we have arranged through the RPSL, uh, Youth Empowerment Sectoral, this specific program. Our current president is Mr. Shabri Halindin. With his guidance and also with our respected board members of RPSL, we have been guided to do all these uh, programs effectively. Well, uh, I'm dedicated to thank a uh, few members initially on this all our youth sectoral committee members who have been working hard for this program to somehow make it more viable, more and effective. And it's, uh, it's been done by a lot of planning and also pre-preparation. And also thank you very much for respect for all the members of our RPSL youth empowerment uh, team. In the meantime, our vice president and patron, uh, Mr. Saif Hanifa, for his continuous dedication towards this program. So I frequently mention Mr. Saif Hanifa for his, for because uh, I, I must, it's my duty also, because he's, he's being the more, more, more powerful in the meantime, more behind us to push us to do this program. So it's all, all the appreciation and also for the thank for on behalf of my team. And I would like to thank Mr. Saif Hanifa for his contribution right through. So coming back to this, uh, today's program, well, uh, now this now see the time have changed and even the way businesses have approached their customers and completely shifted. So traditional marketing has been taken and stepped back, bringing a new face in front of the industry. So now everywhere people are asking, are you in the internet? Are you in the Facebook? Are you in Instagram? So where are we now? So exactly to address that thing, internet has brought the whole new market dynamics today. The digital marketing, the term, has become the norm for a successful business. And if you are not involved in this, your business is not going to grow for future. That is for sure. That's what everybody's saying about. So digital marketing can bring a lot of opportunities and the growth for your business. So it can lead to exposure, more businesses, more leads, more, more sales. And after all, all your goal of the business, business owner is to increase your profit, ultimately the profit. So if you want to see the improvement in your business to increase your sales, or if you want to increase your profit, you must listen to this program today, what they are gonna talk about the digital marketing. So I'm also with you very eager to learn what is this all about the digital marketing from expert from the industry. 
Mr. Tashim Rafi. We have uh, approached him and he's also a member of our RPSL. RPSL, as I said that before, is a it's form of a more intellectual in the country. So we're cream of intellectual in the country. So they are delivering this kind of a service through our youth empowerment program. So Mr. Tashim Rafi is today to deliver this valuable program for us on the line of a digital marketing is more relevant. It's uh, more important for us. So I would welcome all of you to listen to this program and also follow up the second episode of this. Definitely it will contribute for your growth. So I wish you all the very best and would like to listen to this program with you all. And also I'm handing over back to Ms. Tashi. Thank you very much, Ms. Tashi, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahlam. You always have such incredible first words for us to activate our curiosity for the program ahead of us. Thank you so much, sir. So ladies and gentlemen, what exactly is digital marketing? Digital marketing, also known as online marketing, refers to advertising delivered through digital channels to promote brands and connect potential customers using the internet and other forms of digital communication, such as search engines, websites, social media, email, mobile apps, text messaging, web-based advertising. Digital marketing can help you to get to know your audience, learn important information about them, and provide metrics that will give your marketing team credibility. Well, I think you've heard enough from me. We have an expert here in the realm of digital marketing to enthrall us and educate us on how an SME can take on the big league players and be that game changer. Please welcome Mr. Tasim Rafi, an industry expert who will share with us his expertise on how to set up a digital marketing strategy. Mr. Tasim Rafi is a specialist advisory at PwC Sri Lanka and has worked on several diverse projects. He has worked with the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce Academy in providing corporate training programs for the public and private sectors in Sri Lanka. Tasim is a visiting lecturer for digital marketing at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura the Colombo School of Business Management, and he is a guest columnist for Daily FT. He's a co-founder of HubPoint Global, which is one of the leading co-working spaces in Sri Lanka and a key promoter of entrepreneurship in Sri Lanka. Tasim is the director of Venture Green Private Limited, which specializes in organic products and value addition tea. He's also an international sustainable tourism consultant and provides key insights in the tourism industry. Tassim has more than seven years experience in corporate training, lecturing, entrepreneurship, empowerment, FMCG, digital marketing, strategic management, people development, service excellence, disruptive branding, and social media management. Tassim holds a BA Honours Business Management degree from the University of East London. He has worked with several corporates in London where he was part of the East London Business Alliance. After coming back to Sri Lanka, Tasim worked as a regional manager and corporate sales manager for Union Assurance PLC, which is part of John Keels Holdings PLC. So ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for this incredible speaker? Are you ready to be blown away by the month of August's talk of the month? Take it away, please, Mr. Tasim Rafi. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tassi. I think that was a, a very long introduction. So <laughs> thank you very much. I think you must be tired in closing. But, uh, you know, I'm a very, I would humbly like to say, uh, despite all these titles, that uh, I'm a person who likes to uh, share my knowledge uh, with whoever I can. And that's what I do. So in my, uh, in my work as a associate advisory or a corporate trainer or a lecturer, uh, my, my only intention is to share whatever knowledge I have. And as long as it benefits the others, uh, that's what really matters. So, uh, so again, uh, I would like to thank you for the introduction, and I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Ali uh, for the uh, as the chairman of the Youth Empowerment Committee of RPSL. I'd like to thank uh, uh, the president, uh, Mr. Shabri Halimdin, and of uh, and of course uh, uh, Saif Hanifa, who is the vice president and who is doing an enormous job in terms of uh, keeping this RPSL uh, uh, consortium together and such a powerful platform it is, and that's why. I really want to do this program today because this is a platform in which we can reach 
and empower the youth. So that is our uh, main goal as a member of RPSF. That is what I want to achieve today. So uh, the digital marketing is indeed a very important topic because as you know, everyone nowadays, when you talk, whether, whether it be business or personal, we are all enthralled in this social media and digital marketing. So I'm here today um, to deliver uh, a talk about digital marketing and to the best of my knowledge, share how it can benefit uh, all of you uh, in your uh, professional lives, whether it be your business, whether it be your startup, or whether you're working as an employee uh, for your job, digital marketing will definitely uh, benefit you. So without further ado, I'll, I'll uh, share the screen and I'll start with my presentation where I can elaborate more. Okay. I hope you all can see my screen. So. Right, so uh, digital marketing, as I said, is uh, a very broad topic. So uh, it will be very uh, difficult to cover all the topics, uh, the entire uh, topic of digital marketing in this uh, short time frame. But I will make sure that I give you a, a very brief understanding of what, what digital marketing is and how it will benefit your business. And obviously, the benefits of digital marketing uh, for your business. And of course, I will be uh, talking about Facebook, which is the most uh, used and most uh, effective platform in digital marketing, uh, which is something that most companies have and this most traditional marketing has moved towards uh, Facebook marketing, especially in, you talk about social media marketing, Facebook marketing is the most uh, important. So digital marketing is something that uh, is very pertinent and something that we have to adapt nowadays uh, because most of the companies are moving away from traditional marketing because of the huge budgets they have towards digital marketing. So uh, let's have a look at how digital marketing will uh, affect your business and how you can use it uh, to gain maximum lead generation uh, in your business. Okay, so before I get into digital marketing itself, right, I want to first of all um, highlight and talk about marketing because it's very important for us to understand what marketing is, right, before we talk about digital marketing. So most of the, the most of us the mistake that we make is that we go straight into digital marketing without understanding marketing first. So what I have is what I what I'm going to show you in this slide is to first to understand marketing and then we can add the word digital. Right. So if anyone has any questions, please ask me. Uh, questions uh, so I'm willing to uh, make it a very two-way communication. So if you have any questions, you can please ask me because the main aim of this program is to make sure that we all learn. Uh, so what is the difference between uh, shall we, branding? Shall we, shall we ask the participants to raise their hand if they have a question for you? Yes, please, yes. Mr. Asi. Yeah, so uh, if they have a question, you can ask them uh, to raise their hands. No problem. And you can let me know uh, if anyone has any questions. Sure. And uh, so what is the difference between branding and marketing? So first of all, we have to understand uh, people, you know, we think branding and marketing is the same, right? Now, if I ask a general person, if I ask you what is branding and what is marketing, we'll think it's the same thing, right? But there's a clear difference between branding and marketing, okay? Branding is who you are. Marketing is what you do. That's the difference. First of all, now, for example, we all have our own personalities, right? So we, as a person, our personality is who we are. That's, that's called branding. But marketing is how you show that personality to the outside world and how you take it to the outside world, how you present to the outside world. So that is the same thing for your company or your job, right? So branding is actually who you are and marketing is how you show it to the outside world. So that is very important to understand. So marketing is how you build your awareness and how you create your awareness is what branding is. So brand, uh, marketing is and branding is your strategy. Right. So now when we look at marketing, there are different types of marketing. Okay. There are six different types of marketing. Firstly, advertising. So, so I'll be talking about advertising in the terms of digital marketing is a very most commonly used platform for uh, advertising. Then you have strategy. Now without strategy, you really can't go forward. So it's very important to have a very powerful strategy for your business. These come under marketing. Then, of course, like I explained earlier, branding. Branding is very important for us to uh, uphold our marketing and to take it forward. 
right? On top of that, there is research, then there is product, and then there is uh, research is how you uh, do research in, in terms of primary research, secondary research, and they all complement to marketing. Product is very important. Now, why I'm saying product is important is if you don't have a good product, you can't market it, right? That's a problem. Now, unfortunately, what we try to do now is most of the time we think that we can market something easily, but without a strong product, even marketing that is very difficult. So we have to make sure that our product is very strong and marketable. Then we have the internet, which is the most commonly used platform for marketing. So I don't want to take too much time on this. I want to give you a highlight of marketing before I go on to digital marketing. So uh, these are the six main different aspects of marketing. Then I want to talk about the marketing mix, which is a combination of product, place, price, and promotion. Why I'm showing this is because it's very important to understand. Like I explained, product is very important. Then place. Nowadays, place is virtual. What I mean by virtual is, nowadays, you don't really need to have a place to do a business, right? It's very important. You can have a virtual space. So starting a business, and uh, especially for SMEs, is very much easier now. You don't need to have a physical space. You can have a virtual space and go forward. Then price. Price is still very important and how we price our product or service is very important and it adds to the uh, benefit of the marketing mix. So then of course, lastly, you have promotion. Promotion is what I want to talk about now today is how digital marketing is the strongest way of promoting your product. So to see, to understand the marketing mix as a whole, it has changed now due to digital marketing product, uh, have a strong product, have a strong place, I mean, place means you can have a virtual space, now it's much easier, have a strong price and promote it via digital marketing platforms. Now, I'll show you the, I'll, I'll be showing you the FP page of Coca-Cola, which is uh, one of the best Facebook campaigns nowadays, but this is to show 120 years ago, this is the first advertisement of Coca-Cola. Nowadays, can we, we, we don't imagine, but 1895 advertisement, this is the first advertisement of Coca-Cola. So I want to show you how marketing has changed. The radio was the common platform for marketing, right? I will show you, radio was always one-way communication. I want to highlight on this. Radio was one-way communication. The customer always listened to us, right? We, the customer never could give you feedback. That is why digital marketing is different. Radio was always one-way communication. Then the table, television came. This is the first television advertisement uh, that, that was there. So it, again, television is what? Uh, the, the, the advertisement comes to you. You can't say anything back. One-way communication. This is, the, uh, this is how things changed. Apple, Apple, as you know, this was the first uh, personalized computer done by Next company. Uh, then that's how uh, this is the first advertisement that was uh, done in the 1980s, just to show you uh, how it was there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show about all of these were what I want to emphasize on this very clearly because it's very important for us to understand that always uh, television, radio was always one way communication. That my words, my message, my values. There was no nothing coming back from the customer. That's when uh, we are coming to digital marketing. Now, all this now digital versus traditional. I gave you overview of traditional marketing. What is traditional marketing? Radio, newspaper, television. The problem there is that there is no communic there's no two-way communication from the customer. Digital is different. Why is digital different and why is it important? Is because in digital marketing, the customer can take communicate with you. Right? It's very important for us to develop our customer base, to listen to customer feedback, and to provide a better service. Now, for example, if you go before uh, 10 years ago, if you go to a restaurant, and if, uh, if there's something on your food, for example, if there's a worm on your food, if there's something bad, or, uh, something that you cannot eat, if the food is bad, you can't give feedback immediately. Nowadays, what happens? If there's something on your food in a restaurant, you go to Facebook, you go to WhatsApp, and you share everything. So what I'm saying is that we need to be extra careful because the customer can give you instant feedback and in fact spoil your damage. So it's in, uh, spoil the image of the company. So that's why digital marketing is very important and we have to be very cautious of customer feedback. Okay. I want to now give you overview of the cost. Now we're all here 
uh, most of the participants are here. Why? Because we want to learn something, right? I'm sure you're uh, spending your time and you're here because you have logged in today because you, you genuinely want something good to happen to your business. And Sri Lanka's situation is such, right? Where the inflation is going up, businesses are difficult to operate. So perfect time for us to go digital, right? And look here, I, I, I have prepared a slide here to show you the cost. Now, most of the companies that we are in, whether it's our own company, or whether working for company, what do they do? We're trying to cut, cut the cost. Cost reduction has become very important, right? As you can see here, I'll give you the example, traditional cost to reach 2000 people. I'm giving you two examples now, right? One is to reach 2000 people, what is the cost? Digital, traditional marketing, $100 for broadcast, $200 for newspaper, $500 for magazine, $900 for direct mail. Look at the cost here. At the same time, if you're using, uh, if you're using uh, digital marketing, look at the cost. Look how small the cost is, $50, $75. So again, these the same people to reach 2000 people this is the cost you're incurring. Now, uh, I, when I go to BMICH ex uh, exhibitions, I also speak to, since I'm a corporate trainer, I, I speak to a lot of uh, companies, a lot of big companies in Sri Lanka. So I tell them also the same thing. They're spending on exhibitions. They're spending millions of rupees, right? Who comes to the exhibition? Most of the time, it's not the audience that come, right? The people who come in just, just for a walk, just, just for an evening, they come to the exhibition. But do they actually buy your product? They don't do that. But digital marketing, you can choose exactly who you want to target. I will be showing you at the uh, later on in the presentation how you can target the exact customer you want and you can reach the exact person you want, whichever country, whichever nation, whichever segment you want, age group, gender, you can target clearly. So you're not wasting money on, on an exhibition which you, you, you target everyone, but on digital marketing, you can target the exact customer you want. So again, uh, digital marketing is two-way communication. This is an image I like to uh, share uh, because it's a very powerful image, digital marketing, about how you share uh, information between the customer and the uh, seller. So that's how you uh, share information. Okay. Uh, now I want to give you uh, figures, right, about what digital marketing is and the global social media usage. Now, this is according to the World Bank. Uh, this, this was found, this is according in World Bank 2020 uh, report. 7.44 billion people are there on Earth. Okay, our world population is 7.44 billion people. Out of that, 3.8 billion people are using the internet. I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting this for a reason because I'm telling you where your mark, where your customer segment is, where who, who you need to target. 3.84 billion people are internet users. Okay, half the world's population is using the internet. Out of that, 2.46 billion people are using social network. Now, they're using social media, 2.46 billion people. Out of that, 2 billion people are using uh, social uh, networks in mobile phones. This is the most important part of the slide. Please look at this one. Out of 7.44 billion people, 2.01 billion people are people are using social networks on their mobile phones. Very important. Sri Lanka, 40% of the population are using smartphones. Our uh, SIM card penetration is 130%. We have one of the cheap, one of the cheapest, still one of the cheapest mobile data in South Asia. So what I'm saying is we need to target the customer using uh, social media marketing and digital marketing. Okay, I'll give you more figures, uh, more uh, insights now. Uh, this is according to social marketers information that, was, that has found, been found. Why are people using social uh, media marketing? As you can see here, 70% to increase brand awareness, 59% to increase sales lead generation, 48% to increase community engagement, 46% to grow brand's audience, 48% to increase web traffic. This is why people are using social media marketing, especially. Okay, so uh, most of you must be knowing this person, uh, obviously. He's uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, he can be hero or he can be villain, you know, both at once because hero, because he has made sure that we have this wonderful platform to market our products. Uh, villain, because he has uh, distracted all of us, you know, with uh, different platforms. So he's the, currently, he is in charge of his company uh, owning Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So he's basically controlling almost 2 billion people because with his platforms. So, 
what he's saying now is that uh, there is this interesting uh, concept called algorithm, Facebook algorithm, where you can target the exact customer you want, right? 97% of top global brands have a presence on Facebook, right? These are, it's an interesting fact to understand. 97% have, uh, have a presence on Facebook and Instagram also. Now Instagram, uh, we think it's mainly for fun, right? We think Instagram is to post some photos or family photos, but Instagram is a good tool for us to, uh, for business. It's been found out that 90% of the top global brands have a Instagram presence. I mean, this is a very important one I want to highlight and why we should start more on Instagram, right? Uh, the brand engagement is very important, right? I'm sorry, is there a question? I'll pause. Sorry, it's just, okay. So uh, brand engagement. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to trying to highlight why Instagram is very important and very powerful, right? Most of us, we think only Facebook is important, but Instagram is a very important tool in our business. Here, as you can see here, the brand engagement. Now I'm, I'm talking all this time. So let me uh, ask a question to any, anyone can answer. Can anyone tell me why Instagram is uh, more, more engaging than Facebook? Anyone tell me? It's okay, no, if, even if your answer is wrong, because we're all uh, friends, we just want to learn from each other, so no problem. Uh, so I just wanted to hear can, if anyone has any uh, answers. But anyway, uh, the Instagram is mainly important because Instagram has more images, right? Uh, Instagram has, uh, okay, there's, okay, we have a uh, direct message. So uh, sorry, the new generation uses Insta. Okay, that's, that's, that's a, a good point. Uh, we had a good answer. The Instagram uh, from Ms. Anusha. So she says Instagram is more engaging by the youth. Right. Because images play a major part. Right. Yes, it's, uh, we have another message. It's uh, by Ms. Ria. It's user friendly. Okay. That is true. It's very user friendly and the images speak a lot. Now, if you look at advertisements, like for example, if you, if you see uh, Google or Apple, Apple is one of the best marketers, right? One of the world's best marketers. Uh, if you see their presentation, they, they won't have many words. They won't have words in their presentation. They only have images. You know why? Because psychology has found out that uh, if you're marketing something, the image, more image you have gives the customer better. They don't want to read the words. They just want image. So Instagram is more images they have, bigger images. That's why it is four times more engaging than Facebook, you can see here, Twitter 0.3%, Facebook 0.7%, and uh, Instagram is four times more engaging than uh, Facebook, mainly because of the image. So that's a, I'm highlighting this mainly because I want you all uh, to not rely only on Facebook, but to more, uh, be more engaging and to promote your products on Instagram. And I'll be showing you uh, how you can set up a page and how you can uh, be more engaging on Instagram uh, in the next uh, presentation. Okay, so we have another uh, answer. Yes, Instagram is more popular due because of hashtags, uh, which naturally instigates followers. Uh, sorry, I'm dealing that, reading the direct messages, but uh, I just uh, want to, you know, uh, uh, look at the answers. I think Ms. Sabrina has said that uh, Instagram is more uh, engaging because of tagging. I'm just coming to tagging, right? Uh, the world of tagging, because Instagram, what you do is uh, you tag more, right? Uh, the more people you tag, for example, you say you post a post, right? And you mean you tag and you say Sri Lanka. When you say Sri Lanka, there naturally people will start seeing the post of you. So uh, like, for example, that is a brilliant way uh, for us to reach more people uh, in that category. So I will be showing you more details on that uh, later. I just want to uh, give a highlight of what Instagram is. Okay. Now, as you can see this image, this is a, a screenshot that I have taken of a Cristiano Ronaldo, right? Now, obviously, no need interaction for this man. He's one of the most uh, popular people in the world. Uh, the highest paid sports personality in the world, okay? Uh, he, he gets paid $94 million annually. But can anyone guess the, the amount that he earned for this one post? The one post, how much he earned for posting this on Instagram? 
Anyone tell me? He earned uh, $1.4 million only for this post. Now, now my, my question is, I'm not trying to uh, say that it's a big amount, but I'm asking why, why are companies paying this amount for this, uh, for this Instagram post? Why are people paying this much? Because as you know, like I mentioned earlier, now, now we, all, we all are watching the cricket match, right? We all are watching the, uh, the Asia Cup that's happening. When a TV advertisement comes, what do we do? <laughs> we, do we watch the advertisement? No. We just go to the washroom or we go to eat something. That's what we do. So the, the, the company is paying millions of rupees or dollars. They're paying for that particular advertisement, but the reach is not there. But if you look at Instagram, the, the reach is spot on because when you're taking your phone, the people are seeing it, right? So that is the benefit of, of Instagram advertisements. It goes directly uh, to your uh, post and you see it directly. So that's why digital marketing is so powerful and so influential, right? Because of the fact that it's direct marketing and it, it directly goes to you and the reach is massive. Okay, so um, I, I, I spoke about the uh, global statistics. Uh, what I will do now is what I will do now is I will give you some uh, interesting figures. Sorry. From this, uh, okay. So I want to give you some interesting figures about digital marketing in a global concept, right? And and how things are uh, happening in a uh, global scale. I already gave you an insight, but I want to give you uh, real figures about how effective and how uh, powerful this is as a medium. Okay. So uh, you can see here. This is the global digital highlights uh, for Jan 2001. This is being this research is done by uh, Via Social Hootsuite, which is the world's leading researcher in terms of social media, and it researches on digital performance around the world. Right. So as I explained earlier, 7.83 billion people, 5.22 billion are using mobile phone users. Internet users 4.6 billion. Active social media users is uh, 4.2 billion. Right. The global digital growth is, as you can see here. Uh, it's 8.1% by almost, if you compare to uh, Jan 2020 uh, to 2021, it's 81 million its growth. Mobile phones grown by 93 million. Internet users has grown by 316 million. This is a very interesting one if you can see here. Uh, Jan 2020 to 21, 360 million people have started using the internet. Active social media users is 13.2%. Four, 490 million people have joined social media. Okay. Intent users versus the total population. This is a very interesting one. As you can see here, this is the world map. And where, where is the highest participation uh, in terms of internet users? Right. As you can see here, the highest participation is Northern Europe. Northern Europe is using the uh, internet the highest. 96% are using the internet there. And if you look at our, our country, South Asia, Sri Lanka is here. 42% are uh, using the internet. Okay, this social media usage. Highest in the world is 79% again, Europe. And you can see here, Southern Asia is still uh, 31%. Okay, this is what I wanted to, uh, wanted to share. Uh, very interesting here. As you can see, the world's most used social media platforms, right? Uh, Facebook is 2.744 billion people are using Facebook, right? And uh, YouTube, again, number two, two point uh, almost 2.3 billion people are using YouTube. WhatsApp, 2 billion people are using WhatsApp. Messenger, 1.3 billion people. Instagram, 1.2 uh, billion people are using Instagram. Okay. So this is the mobile connection uh, usage. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Just want to give you an overview. Sri Lanka is, uh, Southern Asia is 85%. Okay. So uh, I will give you the global usage of uh, used in terms of uh, searched online for a product or service. What I want to show now is I'll, I'll come to Sri Lanka, which is more, uh, more useful for us. Okay. So uh, when you look at Sri Lanka's stage, now I, I just on a global platform. Okay. Now I want to show you the, the percentage that people are using in Sri Lanka. Right. This is very important for us to see because this is our market out there. And then we have to target the audience and what is, we have to understand what type of customer base is there for us, 
Okay, so uh, two point. Uh, 21.46 million people in Sri Lanka, total population as of Jan 2021. Urbanization is 18.8%. Mobile connections, very interesting, 30.4 uh, million. What is interesting here, if you can see, is that there are more people using mobile phone, uh, mobile SIM users than the population. So we are way ahead, 141% are using so uh, mobile connections. Internet users, you can see here 50% of, of our population is using internet. That is a very good sign, right? Out of that, social media users, 7.9 million people. So 36, 37% of the population is using social media in Sri Lanka. That's why, that's, this is what I want to highlight. This is the target market that we need to uh, target, okay? So this is the annual digital growth. I will go to the uh, other figures. This is something that's very important uh, for, for digital usage for us to understand. Total population, uh, female population, male population, annual change in total population is uh, 0.4%. This is something I want to highlight here. Median age of Sri Lanka is 34, 34. That's the average age of Sri Lanka. That means that we have a very young uh, population out there, uh, which is very enterprising and which is into entrepreneurship. That's, that, that's, uh, that's the median age of Sri Lanka. Okay, so let me just uh, go to uh, population, okay, we've already seen. And I want to show you the internet usage. We all, I already explained earlier. Okay, this is the internet usage. Sorry, I'm going bit quickly because I want to get to the social media part. Okay, right. So I showed you the internet usage. Now I'll show you the social media use in Sri Lanka, which is very, uh, very important for us, right? So this is the... Uh, number of people, the number of changes that's happening. Okay, now this is the Facebook audience, right? The Facebook audience uh, that, that we are seeing, uh, because I want to highlight because this is what people are on Facebook. 7 million people are on Facebook. Potential advertising audience is 41%. Quarter on quarter change is 6.1%. Percent. Percentage of, uh, that is female is 34%, male is 65%. This is something important, although it shows the gender, we can, this shows that what type of the, the gender balance that is on Facebook, we can target. Okay, so I'll quickly uh, skip to the Facebook activation and I will show you the Instagram uh, side of it. So earlier I explained about Instagram. Okay, so the potential audience in Instagram is 1.3 million people are using in Sri Lanka. Again, 7.6% you can target. Again, the percentage, I want to highlight this percentage, 34% are female. 65% are male in terms of the uh, Instagram usage. Okay, so that's the Facebook uh, Messenger. Now I want to highlight about LinkedIn, okay? LinkedIn audience. Uh, why I'm talking about LinkedIn is because we underestimate the power of LinkedIn, okay? That LinkedIn is a massive platform for us to benefit. Now, as you can see here, 1.3 million people are using LinkedIn. Out of that, the, the LinkedIn's potential advertising is compared to total ages, 8.4%. 41% uh, are female and 58.5% are male. That's the Twitter audience uh, that I wanted to uh, share. Okay, so I wanted to give you an overview of, of uh, the social media usage. And uh, what I will do now is due to our uh, time constraints, I really wanted to highlight and talk about uh, a case study, right? Which I have uh, and uh, because this is something that if you're talking about digital marketing, right? I prepared a case study about uh, Uber and how they uh, do their uh, digital marketing, right? So, okay. So um, what, what I want to highlight now is the fact that uh, Uber is a, a company that has done um, pretty much an amazing job in terms of uh, digital and in terms of how they do digital marketing. So rather than me talking about digital marketing, I want to give you real examples on this case study about how this company has done digital marketing and how they have succeeded. So then you will have a better understanding about a real company which has done uh, digital marketing. Okay. So, um, sorry, I'll just look at the chats. Right, okay, so uh, what I will do now is in this case study, we'll be having 
Uh, I'll try to cover this uh, in, in 10 minutes, this case study. It will be, this has 15 slides, so I want to quickly highlight the most important uh, potential of this uh, of Uber and how they are uh, conducting their business. Okay, so the agenda will have the company background, the case highlights, the business model, internal analysis, external analysis, SWOT analysis, and recommendations for Uber. Okay, so the Uber company was founded in 2009, right? The company was founded by two university students, uh, Garrett Camp and Travis Kalanick. Uh, it was based in San Francisco and originally the company was founded as a private car service. But I want to highlight that the communication was done through emails and they started in 2010. And they used technology to bring passengers and drivers together. Okay, so now I want, now I want to talk about the business model of Uber, right? How they use their business model and how they use digital marketing to really grow. Right. So the reason I chose this company is because this is the most technologically digital and innovative companies out there. And they were the first company to use an app, right? They use an app to get a ride. So Uber is the smartest way to get, to get around. And they were one of the first companies to start app, to start an app. And also uh, I want to highlight this part is that they were the first company to use a payment, which is completely cashless, right? So they were the first company to go uh, for a payment service that is completely cashless and digital payment. So that's why Uber became so popular because firstly, they used app service and they used a completely cashless uh, payment. Okay, so they, they identified from the customer perspective and from the product perspective, I'm gonna tell you how they identified from the customer. So how did Uber go, go about targeting the customer was they, ta they targeted people who do not have a car. Uber is easy to use. They wanted because people after a Saturday night they, they they drink and they can't travel. Uber is good for that. Then people who want to go like a VIP, Uber again was used for that. And they want a cost efficient cap at their doorstep with the less uh, with the, especially at the current rate. Uh, Uber was very much useful for them uh, to use. Okay, so uh, relationship how they built was mainly via social media, right? Their customer support was very good. Review ratings and feedback system was uh, very good. Okay, so the distribution channels they used, again, like I explained, mainly was social media and they used websites. They used mobile apps for mobile apps for Android, for, for iPhones, they used very well and they used popular destinations. So this was the main distribution channels they used to uh, get to the customer. Okay, so now I look at the internal analysis and external analysis of Uber. I want to highlight uh, how internal means what, what they did internally to make sure uh, the company grew. Okay. So um, in terms of internal analysis, the mission statement was transportation as reliable as running water everywhere for everyone was their main logo. Uh, I would request uh, to switch off the microphones, please. Right, so the strategic objectives was aggressive growth and global expansion. And uh, there was recruitment. Uh, Mr. Rafi, you are muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. All right, okay, okay, no problem, thank you. Right, so sorry about that. Uh, so uh, the strategies they used was recruitment strategies for they used drivers and how they how they linked everyone up. And again, social media was done mainly by Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and its websites. Okay, so I will uh, explain about the external analysis for Uber, okay, and how they uh, how they operate as a company. So they they. Uh, if you look at the external analysis means outside what happened. So political side, they had a lot of issues. There were sometimes bans in, uh, in, in London, for example, the company was banned. They had political issues now in Sri Lanka also. Uh, Pick Me and Uber are one of the most fiercely competitive companies. And again, they use social media uh, a lot for them to uh, compete and uh, for them to gain the upper advantage. So economical wise, they had increased competition. For example, Sri Lanka, Pick Me was there. Social issues, they had lower drive wages certain areas and economic friendly alternatives came up. Technological side, they had self-driving cars and they had electric cars coming up. 
Okay, so I will uh, talk about the external analysis in terms of uh, competitor analysis. Now it's very important to understand uh, from a competitor perspective uh, what they understood. Okay, now for example, the future objectives was to expand and be able to offer rights at airports and areas where they are currently unable to and expand it to highly populated areas. And the current strategies was offer rights to everyone. And assumptions were Uber can assume the future will lead to more success for their company. And uh, capabilities was Uber is capable of providing rights through the use of a smartphone app. Again, they use the apps very well. Response was Uber must expand in new areas, which they are looking into. So this is a compared analysis uh, for Uber and how they looked at the compared analysis. Okay, now I want to highlight about the uh, SWOT analysis, which is uh, one of the most important uh, aspects for the company. SWOT basically means strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Okay, so uh, this will be the last few slides for Uber. So I want to uh, talk about what, how they looked at the SWOT analysis. Now, even for our company, it's very important from a perspective to understand what is our cost. So what is our strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats? Okay, so uh, for Uber, so I'm not gonna read all of them due to the time constraint. What I will do is that I will mention the two important points. Uber's main strength was well-organized brand. It was a global brand, and they had a very cashless payment system, which was their main strength. Weakness was idea can be copied easily. Now, for example, to start a company, it's very easy, right? With an app can be easily formed, and you can start a company very easily. Relationship between the driver and the Uber drivers is very risky. There can be harassment issues sometimes. So those are the main weaknesses, and there were privacy concerns for the company. Uh, opportunities were... Uh, they can tap into growing markets uh, very easily. They are, they were expanding very fast and they can exploit bigger markets such as India. So those are the main opportunities there are. And uh, the threats mainly now, for example, the current threat, as we know, is the COVID situation and the fuel situation, for example, in Sri Lanka. That's one of the main reasons why um, the, uh, the, the, for example, their service is being affected. So that can be an external uh, threat for Uber and the problems they uh, face. Okay, so uh, this is the recommendations in the case study that uh, they have given for Uber, which was maintain consistent uh, pricing for customers in both rural and non-rural cities, provide validated proof of safety for customer peace of mind, expand business into other facets of business, and allow users to put for reservations or days in advance and the drivers commit to pick up a reservation. So uh, overall, this is the final slide and what they recommend was uh, pricing is very important, provide a valid proof of safety and expand into other uh, business models uh, they had to use. So that uh, this is the case study that I wanted to uh, talk mainly for Uber uh, because of, uh, of how important they are and how they have performed uh, in, the, uh, in terms of digital marketing, right? So now what I will do is I will uh, show you the, I have showed the, uh, the page of uh, Uber. So now I will uh, show you directly about their page and uh, what, what they're actually doing and how you can uh, promote. So uh, what I will do is uh, in this presentation, uh, I'll show you the practical part of it. So I, I explained about the overview of digital marketing. So uh, what I will do is now I will show you Facebook and how you can actually use it uh, to uh, increase your brand engagement. Okay. So this is the page that uh, a page that uh, is my. I wanted to give you an example of my own page, which we started uh, for e-commerce activities, and I wanted to show you some uh, real-life practical examples about how you build a brand, right? So before I I do that, I want to show you Uber's uh, Facebook page. Right, so as you can see here, we look at the uh, Uber Eats page, right? And how, how they're managing their page. So example, I want to give you an idea about how a company like Uber uh, really performs. So the key is to make sure that you're posting a lot of posts, right? Now, for example, I'm giving you the real uh, Facebook page of Uber Eats, right? Now I want to give you uh, a real example of one of the world's best companies in terms of Facebook. Uh, how, how their marketing has grown. And Coca-Cola, as you can see, they have 109 million likes. I want to give you the real example and, and show you their Facebook page and for us to uh, gain insights. As you can see here, right? 
right? So that's how regularly uh, they keep posting. So this is one of the most, uh, one of the companies that had the highest potential. Uh, I will show you Red Bull. Okay, can everyone hear me now? Yes, we uh, can, you can hear me, right? Okay, sure, great. I think there's a small muting issue. Right, so this is the, the Facebook page and you can see, I want to highlight about how regular uh, they keep posting. So the key, like I explained earlier, is to almost, if you're having a Facebook page, you must post almost every day. Now, as you can see here, I explained earlier, now, Red Bull is a classic example I want to give. I don't want to talk about the concept, the theories. I want to give you the practical example. As you can see here, what are they doing? They're using more videos and images. As you can see here, almost daily, they are posting a Facebook post, right? So that is uh, how effective and how much you must post. A lot of people ask me, uh, how much do you need to post? Like how regularly? So I tell them at least for one week, you need to post at least four posts if it's going to be engaging. Right. So uh, this, is the, this is the page that uh, we have. And uh, obviously the most important uh, question that we all have is for how we in increase engagement, how we increase the, uh, the brand engagement and how we uh, gain more leads. Right. Um, so basically, if you look at Facebook, right, uh, if a Facebook page, now I'm going to show you practically how you, how you promote. It's something that's uh, very important. Right, so when you go to your Facebook page, I, I explained earlier about how you boost posts, right? And how you uh, actually gain more leads, right? So, so example here, you can, you can target the particular audience you want, right? So as you can see here, you can uh, boost for seven days, you can use uh, for three days per day. So you can choose who you are gonna target as you can see here, right? So uh, basically you can choose uh, whichever audience that you want. So it's, uh, so, so in that way, uh, this is a very effective tool. So I don't want to uh, uh, go down into more details, but I, I really want to give you an insight about uh, how you can target the particular audience, right? So again, uh, that, in terms of boosting and in terms of targeting your own audience, you can create this post, right? All right, so let me just show you uh, how you create ads. Right, so as you can see here, you can go to this site and uh, you can choose the correct people you want. I'm sorry, due to the time constraints, I'll be talking about Facebook uh, in this presentation. And in the in part two, I'll be talking more about uh, Instagram and other, other tools. Right. So um, that's, that's basically, uh, I showed you how uh, the practical sites, I showed you the, the Facebook pages of uh, popular companies like Coca-Cola, Uber, and how they're posting. And it's, uh, I think this is the, the basic concept about how you create a page. And uh, so I, I, I showed about how uh, the examples of real companies uh, who are uh, doing this and who are presenting, uh, who are having a very strong presence on uh, Facebook, right? Uh, so basically uh, in the presentation I have uh, highlighted in this, uh, in this uh, session about the importance of Facebook right? The importance of digital marketing and how effective digital marketing is as a global platform. And I showed you uh, in Facebook about how you can target your customers and the real life examples of companies that have done uh, an effective role in, the, in uh, Facebook promotions. 
So um, uh, I, I really want to talk about Instagram and uh, other platforms, but uh, we have uh, limited timing for that. So we will do that uh, in the next sessions where we'll talk about uh, the Instagram and other platforms where we can cover in more detail. So now uh, I would like to uh, open uh, for, for question and answers. I'm sure there's a lot that you want to ask in terms of your uh, business about what you have uh, for in terms of questions. So I would like to hear from all of you. Uh, there are, I'm sure there are different companies, different industries that are here. So uh, I would like to hear from all of you and I can give you real insights and uh, real advice about how you can uh, get your company going in digital market. So over to you, Ms. Tassi, you can ask, uh, I'm opening the Q&A to you, sure. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Tassim Rafi, for that excellent glimpse into the world of advertising through the use of digital media. I have certainly learned so much this evening and many Thank digital vocabulary words have taken on new meaning for me after your informative and insightful presentation. Thank you very much. Um, having heard the introduction into this topic today, I'm eagerly now looking forward to the next session, I think, where you're going to take us into more depth uh, on the topic of digital marketing. So as Mr. Rafi said, we will now move into a question and answer session. Um, I encourage anybody who has pertinent questions, please add them into the chat. And I'm happy to, I'm sure Mr. Tassin can see them as well. Mr. Tassin, I've got a few questions here that people have sent to me privately. Um, yes. Well, what is the source for this data that you're sharing with us today? Uh, the data that you're sharing? Okay, so it's basically from Via Social, which is Food Suite, uh, which is a well renowned company which does a lot of research and uh, global research on digital marketing. So, and I've also used World Bank sources as well, which are pertinent and are very useful for uh, digital marketing. So, uh, so yeah, so mainly it's, it's from Food Suite, which a lot of digital marketers use around the world. And uh, I, I, what I can do is I can, uh, we can share that link also. I'm sure that uh, I, I will send a personal link later to all the participants where you can have a understanding better of the, of the links, of the source, source of the uh, information. All right. Um, Thank you. Rafi, the next question, which one is most if, the most effective digital marketing platform for sales and cost effective as well? Okay, so that is that is actually a very good question. But uh, in terms of, uh, you can't really say which which is effective because, like I said, uh, each one is effective in their own ways. For example, uh, Facebook is effective for it, it, obviously for the large audience, for the global audience, and and also for all age groups. For example, Facebook can be for uh, twenty to 30, 30 to forty, forty to fifty, any that that age category. But if you look at Instagram, so if it depends on your business actually, what is your what is your business type, right? For example, what type of business are you into? If your business is more catering towards the younger generation, I would say Instagram is the best platform. And uh, and uh, in this uh, in this session, I couldn't really cover that. I'm looking forward to covering that in the next session where I will go in the in dips into Instagram. But Instagram is the ideal platform to cover the younger generation. So if your if your product or if you're a young startup, I would say Instagram is a platform. But uh, me personally, I have created several brands on my own as well. Like I have our own co-working space brand and uh, we had our own King Coconut Water brand also. I would say use Facebook and Instagram both in an effective way. But again, it depends on the target audience and the age group and also the type of business that you're running. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question is, which is best when starting a company? Would you recommend social media or a website? Okay, yeah, I think that's also an equally important question uh, because when you're, when you're starting a business, right? Uh, now, five years ago, or maybe two, three years ago, website was the thing, right? Website, everyone used to start a website because website was where you get information. But now I'm asking all of the participants here also, if you want to check the check the credibility of a company, what do you do? You go to you go to Facebook page, right? I'm sure we most of us we go to the Facebook page to see how many likes this company has. So again, that's why Facebook is very important. You can have a website to have information, but a Facebook page is absolutely essential because in our mindsets to see if the company is original, to see if the company is actually there, and if they're doing well, we check how many likes the company has. So again, it's very important to have a social media presence. And to have to create your Facebook page is absolutely important because without a Facebook page, your company will not be genuine. People have come to that level. So website is for information, but a Facebook page is absolutely essential for any company. Now, not just a B2C company, even for a B2B company, 
they're having Facebook pages. Now, companies such as Brandix and Mars Holdings, who have nothing to do with the customer directly, they're also having a strong Facebook page, mainly because to uphold the image. So it's very important to have a uh, social media Facebook page. Right. Thank you. Um, what is the sum that you recommend spending on Facebook advertising per day for an SME in the service industry? Okay, so the sum you spend is actually depends on the on the audience reach that you want, right? For example, uh, like I mentioned, uh, if you if you spend for five dollars, there's there's a potential to reach thousand people, right? Uh, with with five dollars uh, that you're spending. But again, it, it, it depends. Even though it's thousand people, the more people that click on your on the on the particular ad, it can reach to more people. So again, um, I want to highlight on this question. It's a very important question. People think that Facebook advertisement is only about uh, spending money on advertisements. People think that is that is the thing. But really, I think organic is also very important because naturally, without spending money, also you can build your brand. Now, how you can bring that build that brand is, for example, if you start a business, you can comment on other bigger groups, right? And you can organically reach your goal as well. Because sometimes, to be honest, when you're promoting, you might not reach the actual audience, or you might not reach the genuine genuine likes that you might get. But uh, organic likes are also very important. And uh, most of us, we forget that organic sharing can reach more people uh, also. So it's very important for us to reach our audience via sharing more and encouraging uh, people to share more. And also we can comment on other groups. So in that way, we are getting a more reach. So my advice to the young SMEs, to the people who are starting, please don't rely only on paid advertisements, but try to uh, uh, look into uh, and, uh, organic likes also and promoting your page via that platform also. All right, thank you. Um, a couple more questions. Sure. Is digital marketing only virtually consumed than real life purchases? Okay, only virtually consumed. Okay, that's, 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 that's a good question, you know, because people think uh, digital marketing is, yeah, it is mainly virtually consumed, but uh, I, want, I want to talk about this company this new philosophy that is called digital, right? Now, now we think that uh, most of we think now, for example, if you're starting a clothing brand, right? Now people think that the real, the real question is, should we go digital or should we go physical, right? That's a question, right? So now there's a new concept called digital, which is a mixture of going physical and digital together. Now, for example, it's been found out that 70% of the uh, consumers, when they're purchasing a product, they like to go on uh, Facebook or Instagram and see the product, see the specifications. But when it comes to actual purchasing, they like to go to a store and purchase, right? Sometimes that happens. So yeah, it's not only virtually consuming. Um, when it comes to digital marketing, it gives you sometimes the overview of the product and gives you insight, but uh, it's not only virtually, but sometimes you go and purchase directly. So um, I would advise all of you uh, listening to really look into this concept called digital, which is basically promoting uh, via digital platforms, but when it comes to purchasing, they come to the store. So it's a good combination of physical and digital together. Yes. All right. Uh, we have somebody who is a participant here who has just launched an online advertising platform called Soup Lanka. Yes. Okay. It has sections, the classifieds, the store where products are listed with the okay. payment gateway and the directory. Keeping the advertising costs really low and very competitive. The target group is small and medium enterprises. How could they increase awareness about this platform and get more people to use it? Okay, right. So that's 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 a that's a good uh, platform to start off with. For example, uh, so it's a mainly uh, it's a startup. So for startups, like I explained earlier. Uh, you already have started promoting the product and you have uh, obviously started paying advertisements for it. Uh, so that, that, that is one way of actually increasing the, increasing the awareness. But like I said, don't only really rely on uh, paid advertisements, but go for real like uh, real uh, sharing. So I'll, I'll give a good example. I showed you the page of uh, Coca-Cola and I showed you the page of Red Bull. Now, as you can see, how many shares, how many posts they're posting. So please, my advice is, if you're having a Facebook page, and if you're especially a startup, post at least four posts per, per, per a week. Because the more posts you post on your Facebook page, the more awareness is created, the more people share, and also Facebook will make sure that you reach more people using the Facebook algorithm. So my advice is 
uh, if you're having a Facebook page and if you, and especially SME, please don't only rely on, on pair advertisements, post more of your posts. So at least four posts per week is my advice and uh, try to record, uh, share more posts and uh, post more frequently to increase engagement with your audience. Thank you, Serapi. Um, sure. There's one question. What are the tips to increase in a Facebook organic reach? All right. So uh, that's so. What are the tips to increase Facebook organic reach? Is like I explained. I just uh, I just gave the answer. Uh, it is to post more and to share more, and that will definitely reach in a more organic way. So my uh, again, I'm saying what I repeated earlier. Uh, uh, posting more on your Facebook page is very important, and regular posting will give you uh, better engagement and more lead generation also. All right. Um. I haven't got any more questions here. I would like to hear some uh, real, uh, you know, sort of like people speaking up and asking questions. I'm welcoming all. <laughs> raise their hand or unmute them. You know, I can unmute them and they can ask them. Um, yes. Uh, I'm because uh, I uh, I would like to take this opportunity as a, you know, because I would really like to help all of you all. And that's the reason that I'm spending my time here today because uh, I really genuinely want to help and uh, all the young businesses. So I don't want to waste the time. Please, if you have any questions, uh, please ask me. I'd be more than happy to uh, help you all grow your business. Uh, Brother Rafi, uh, Mafaz here. Yes, Mafaz. Just, just a small clarification as a Facebook user and a LinkedIn user. Uh, sure. Most of the time, Facebook is relied on as an uh, awareness builder. Whereas yes, uh, yes. you get the actual or the, what you call the delivery through other means like LinkedIn, where it's more professionals, you get your target. It depends on the product, what you're talking. You see, uh, I'm into education. So my specific yes. is different. But if you yes. are into a product-based thing, yes, Facebook is ideal. So how would you perceive? Would you, would you say, let's say, I just started off, let's say, let me, I started off a, started a start, startup which uh, deals with food or something to do with uh, consuming. Okay. Uh, so... Is it, is it ideal for me to go on a barrage of uh, paid advertisements plus organic or posting regularly to increase the awareness, increase the likes, and then start uh, building up organic following, uh, organic uh, response, or is it, uh, is it the other way it's better? Okay, that's a good question also. Basically, uh, like I explained, it depends on the, uh, on, on the, on the target audience and on, also on the uh, custom preference that you have. But it's a very good question because I think a, a level of, Paid advertisement is required. Now, for example, when you're starting your page, uh, you obviously pay and you get around 1,000 likes, 4,500 likes is okay. So for that to initially start off is a good, uh, a paid advertisement is very useful. And most companies do that to, to reach 1,500. So after they reach that, that platform, to that particular category, like I explained earlier, it's very important to, to post more regularly and to encourage more sharing. So in that way, the organic reach will also increase. So, uh, so to say in a nutshell, I think... Um, the, uh, for an effective social media campaign, it is very important to have a good mixture of, of pair advertisements and organic reach. So uh, they both go hand in hand. And uh, if we use it very effectively, I'm sure that we will engage more people and get more lead generation. So again, I'm saying uh, to, to start off, yes, you need to uh, pay and, and get that particular reach. But after that, I would advise a lot of companies to go for organic uh, posts and to uh, share more posts and to post more to get more lead generation. Thank I you. Hope that I yes. yes, it was very much clear. I think uh, I had a few doubts, which you, so you cleared it. Uh, and not, no just another one thing uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, hype going around saying that there are people who come and approach you saying that we will look after your Facebook, uh, your social media marketing, you pay us a one time fee monthly. We will do right. a job and we'll show this much of likes and this much of uh, lead generations. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how far it's, uh, is it is it is it recommended? I would say, uh, is it better for us to take charge of our page so that we are more accountable or we give it to somebody and, you know, uh, uh, or it could be a it could be a tactic to on a short term to you know just to boost up and then you know take grab the limelight and take it forward. You know that that's a good. I mean, like uh, obviously when you're starting a page, uh, uh, you 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 generally have a lot of hype. You know, I want to create my page and I want to start my page. I want to promote. But normally, what happens is my uh, from my experience also giving it to a third party is also very uh, useful because their full time job is Facebook. You know, their full time job is social media management, so they will. As, as, a, as, as their job, they will make sure that they post regularly and they sometimes we might forget or we might not have that motivation. 
but they will do it in a more effective way. And obviously, uh, since they have more experience and they have more experience with various other companies, they might do a better job. But again, uh, if you want to have control of your Facebook page, it's also good. Uh, you can also uh, uh, have control and you can be more motivated. But again, it depends on case by case instance. Uh, also, uh, but my advice uh, is normally to give it uh, when these companies, they obviously they, not to charge more, but uh, it depends on your budget also. But uh, these companies really do a good job in terms of making sure that uh, their regular posts are there and they do a, and they sometimes uh, make sure that engagement is also very high. So yeah. depends on a case by case uh, instance, but uh, I would recommend uh, uh, to go for these companies, but on a, uh, to check clearly on your requirements also. I think uh, also the budget plays a vital role on that. If you have deep pockets, yes, definitely. Yes. But if not, you know, you have to manage it accordingly. Yes, like I said, it, it depends on the on the size of your organization also. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, because like uh, on, on these digital companies, larger ones will charge, charge a bigger budget, but they will make sure that the reach is there also. Yes, so... So it depends, basically. Yeah. I, I think uh, whatever I asked would be beneficial to others as well. That's why I wanted to throw that question at you. Thank you Thank very you. much. It was very insightful and very, uh, I, I actually uh, rekindled some of my memories and things. So really, <laughs> I learned a lot. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahaz, for those excellent questions. Mr. Rafi, Thank I have two questions for you. I hope you have time. Uh, um, sure, sure. Please. Yeah. How do you think digital marketing will help different sectors in these challenging times? Okay. So digital marketing, like I said, uh, there are different sectors. For example, uh, it can be uh, in the field of IT or e-commerce. Or for example, it can be in the, in the field of, uh, of uh, for example, if you're starting a food and beverage or, or, or that, that sector. So again, like I said, these different sectors also, it depends on the target market and on the target audience. And uh, so, so that, that really plays a part. So again, uh, these obviously these are challenging times, but uh, the sectors also, you have to target accordingly, right? For example, like I said, e-commerce platforms can be more effective on Instagram. And uh, for example, if it's a, a food and beverage, or for example, that, that can be more effective on Facebook. So again, it depends on the sector that you're in and the, and the target market that you're targeting. So for example, that's why I'm saying again, it's very important to look at which market you're targeting before you go to a, a platform. So um, yeah, so different uh, sectors can have different potential, but it all depends on the platform and the particular target segment that you're targeting. All right. Um, and the last question I have so far, I don't know if any other audience members are having any questions in mind. How has branding evolved with digital marketing? How is branding evolved? Okay, that's uh, that's that's uh, something that I wanted to highlight in my presentation also. Uh, branding and digital marketing go hand in hand, right? Because nowadays, before branding was all about uh, you know uh, billboards. When you when you go on the road, you see these massive billboards and all of that. But now branding has slowly turned into digital marketing. So nowadays, your entire brand is on digital platforms. So again, uh, brand has changed due to digital marketing platforms and uh, it has completely uh, uh, evolved because now the, the, the last example that I want to give is for example, you see Elon Musk. Elon Musk is promoting the Tesla car, right? Uh, does he ever say Tesla car is better than a Mercedes Benz or better than Ford or this, this that no, he never says that. What does he say? He simply says, if you're driving a Tesla car, you're saving the world. Why is he saying that? He's saying that mainly because uh, a Tesla car is an electric car. Electric car is less carbon dioxide. And less carbon dioxide means less pollution and you're saving the world. So there you go again. That's how you brand your product. So it all depends on uh, nowadays the last uh, uh, advice. So obviously, I'm, I'm sure I don't have time. But last advice is uh, for all the companies is don't only focus on your product but focus on the experience that you're giving. Most of the time, what we do is we focus only on the product, but with the product itself, give the experience and then the customer will engage more. So always don't only focus on the product, but even overall experience of the product and that will lead to more effective branding and uh, engagement. I hope that, yes. Yeah. Okay, I think that has brought us to the end of the Q&A session because I don't have any other questions. Um, no, no other questions. So. I'd like to thank everyone who asked those very pertinent and very useful questions to add to our learning this evening. I would now like to call upon RPSL member, Madam Nurul Munawara to deliver the vote of thanks.
Madam Nurul Munawara is a chartered engineer by profession, having 37 years industry experience and currently working as a deputy general manager of the Ceylon Electricity Board. Welcome, Sister Munawara. Thank you, Madam Tessie Dahla. Wow, what an informational presentation. I think a presentation with mountain of data, case study, and impact of digital marketing in social media for SMCs. Any audience who had the slightest idea of digital marketing definitely must have enriched with more knowledge and know-how on digital marketing. And the audience who had no idea of digital marketing, definitely they must have got some idea about digital marketing. Thank you very much, Mr. Thasim Rafi, for your excellent presentation. And we know that amidst a busy schedule, you were able to deliver this presentation. And we are very, very grateful for your presence and for your excellent presentations. Please accept our heartfelt appreciation on behalf of Youthful, uh, Youth Empowerment Sectoral Committee of RPSL Consortium. Thank audience, you thank you. Audience, without your participation, you would not have had a successful event today. So hope all of you are loaded with more data to enrich yourself and more information about digital marketing. Please accept our appreciation. Because of you, we had a successful event. And we should not forget the tireless effort of the organizing team and PR team who were planning this event for some time. And uh, they were going through point by point to make this event a successful. So our special appreciation to the sectorial youth empowerment sectorial committee president chairman dr ali ahla and for his the wonderful monitoring close-up monitoring from the beginning till the end and special appreciation to the patron mr saif hanifa who were behind the team almost almost every hour every hour he was following up with the team Thank you, Sai, for your continuous effort. And uh, Mr. President of RPSL Consortium, Shabri Halim Dean, and Board of Management for your approval to conduct this session, which is a very fruitful session on for session. And we appreciate Board of Management on behalf of RPSL Youth Empowerment. I should mention, mention some names, especially who were. Uh, working tirelessly from the beginning till the end. The PR team and Mr. Amar, Amar Fali, who was, you know, played a vital role in designing the flyer, getting all the inputs from coming right around from every corner, and he was able to accommodate everything. And especially Mr. Jalil, who really boosted the promotion and the it was a very successful event because they are, I mean, the reach exceeded 5,000. What a wonderful. So my special appreciation to Mr. Jelly for your wonderful work. And Dr. Jeffari, as always, you are a good supporter from the beginning for last two years. You are supporting us with your own Zoom account for us to conduct any presentation, any events at any time and any day. Our heartful appreciation to Jeff, Dr. Jafari Dula Pandey. Finally, it was a super excited and made an inquisitive about the presentation about the digital marketing. Thank you, everyone. And thank you on behalf of RPSL Consortium. Again, thank you, everyone. Madam Tessie Zagla, over to you. Thank you, Sister Munawara. Thank you for those lovely words. Thank you for acknowledging all of the key players in this um, event this evening. So on behalf of our PSL Consortium, I would like to thank you all for participating in this webinar this evening. 
we look forward to having you all with us for part two of this series, the digital marketing for SMEs. Do you want to be a game changer? Tentatively, we have scheduled the next session for Thursday, September 22nd. Uh, we will be informing you whoever has added their details into the Google form. And uh, there were a couple of people who sent me their details on the chat, which is fine as well. I will add them into the form. We will inform you um, about the next event once it's confirmed. So on behalf of everybody here at RPSL, Mr. Rafi, thank you once again for just thank you. looking away with all of this information. And, yes, uh, I would like to thank everyone. And uh, my final words, I'd like to thank uh, everyone until I see you in the next session. I hope you all uh, came to today's session and uh, you can always reach out to me on my uh, on my Facebook or LinkedIn accounts where if you have any questions regarding your business, I'll be happy to help. And uh, again, thank you very much uh, for RPC for organizing this event and for all the participants who are here today. Thank you very much. All right, on that note, thank you everybody and good night.